Hi, I'm Bob Balch. Thanks for tuning in to That's Jesus channel. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to listen to this. I am... Uh, I haven't been on online in quite a while, and so a lot of you are probably thinking, where's where's that guy? Did he lose his camera or what? So here I am. I am uh, in the midst of doing some studying on baptism. Hopefully, we'll be able to get that video out to you uh, or that installment of videos uh, fairly soon. But in the meantime, I think I'm going to make a series of videos about why I left the Church of Christ. Now, some of you might be thinking, you were in the Church of Christ? I, I sure was. I was raised in the Church of Christ. And so that's what this video is going to be talking about. It's just um, my background in the Church of Christ. And the, the very first thing that happened to help me realize that I needed to leave. So I was, um, I can't say that I was born into the Church of Christ. I don't think my uh, parents were in the Church of Christ when I was born, probably soon thereafter. Um, but uh, I, I was raised in the Church of Christ. Not only a Church of Christ, I was raised in one of the most conservative branches of the Church of Christ. Uh, there are about two dozen, maybe more, branches of the Church of Christ, each of them claiming the name, we're the Church of Christ, the uh, the, the church that was established in 33 AD and is uh, the, the one true church of, of people that are, are saved. Uh, at least that's what the more conservative churches of Christ are, are saying. And the, the branch of Church of Christ that I grew up in is called the Non-Institutional Church of Christ. It's the Church of Christ that says... Um, you shouldn't have kitchens, you shouldn't support orphanages, you shouldn't support um, uh, missionary societies, you shouldn't support colleges, things like that. And, and there are a whole slew of verses that they use um, to, to support that those conclusions. But that's the branch that I grew up in. If, if you had to say that the Church of Christ is a bunch of Pharisees, I was a Pharisee of Pharisees. That's my background in the Church of Christ. And so I uh, was totally um, uh, bit into it, uh, supported it, and uh, um, actually preached it. And um, that that's that's my... That's the Church of Christ background that I have. So um, a couple of things about the, the Church of Christ that you may not know uh, before we get into the fir first thing that happened to me that, that made me question whether or not the doctrines of the Church of Christ were correct is that the Church of Christ has no official doctrines. Nothing is written down, and they do that on purpose. They do that on purpose because the Church of Christ doesn't want to have a creed. It doesn't want to have a manual. It doesn't want to have a, um, a handbook. It doesn't want to have any of those catechisms or anything like that. And that way they can continually say, we just use the Bible all these other groups, they use the Bible plus something else. And so nothing is written down as an official creed of the Church of Christ. If you go to a website that says, we're the Church of Christ official website, and uh, for all churches of Christ, and here are our doctrines, here are our creeds, here are, our, are the beliefs of the Church of Christ, that's a fake website. There is no website for the Church of Christ that has all of their doctrines. It can't be because they've got over two dozen divisions in the Church of Christ, and um, all of them aren't the same. Uh, another thing about the Church of Christ is that they um, they are are very big on authority. That's the if if you're going to have a. a, a a talk with someone in the Church of Christ, and they're going to try to convert you to the Church of Christ way of thinking, they're going to hammer on authority. Why do they do the things that they do? Why do I'll, I'll put myself in their shoes. Why do we do the things that we do in the Church of Christ? It's because we look at authority. We look at uh, necessary inference. We look at direct commands. We look at um, approved examples. We, we we do those things and we draw these conclusions. And uh, it's all based on evidence. We only use the Bible. We speak where the Bible speaks. We're silent where the Bible is silent. We do Bible things in Bible ways. Where the Bible says it, doesn't matter whether I believe it or not, that settles it because the Bible says it. And um, those are the, the things about the Church of Christ that they're going to focus on. They're going to focus on authority, and um, <clears throat> and they're going to do all of that out of a uh, a centralized the, the the central 
emotion of the Church of Christ is fear. Fear that you're not doing everything correctly. Fear that you have gone too far. Fear that you haven't gone far enough. Fear that you're outside the bounds. Fear that you're not coloring to the edges. It's it's all fear. Fear that um, if you don't do everything exactly right, that God is going to be displeased and you're going to be destroyed forever in hell. It's all about fear. And uh, should we fear God? Well, sure, we should fear God. But... Um, that is what the Church of Christ doctrines are based out of, fear, which is interesting because that is not what the beginning of the Church of Christ was based on. So that's the, the Church of Christ. If you want to uh, get into specific doctrines that the Church of Christ believes, uh, generically, um, most churches of Christ uh, will believe that you don't need to have instrumental music. Some will go on the uh, far extreme and say, we can have it if we want to, but we just don't because of tradition. Another group on the other far extreme will say, if you use a pitch pipe to make sure that your a cappella singing is in tune, you're sinning. So you have these far extremes within the Church of Christ about instrumental music. But that is one of the things that they are known for. Another thing that they're known for is you take the Lord's Supper on Sunday, every Sunday, if you meet twice on Sunday, you need to make sure that the people who, who are coming in a Sunday evening that couldn't be there Sunday morning, they have the opportunity to take it as well. If you have members that um, are in uh, senior homes or in the hospital or something like that, you're going to send someone to that home or 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 if they're if they're at a loved one's house or if they're in the hospital, you're going to take the Lord's Supper to them so that they can be be included in the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper is a is a sacrament that is very important in the Church of Christ. They do it every Sunday. Uh, at least most churches do. Some some other churches of Christ don't. Uh, they'll do it quarterly or monthly. Um, the other thing is that some of the more conservative ones will say you can only do it on Sunday. When you meet on Wednesday, they're not going to do it. On the other hand, other churches of Christ will say that it's okay to do it on Wednesday. So you got these extremes, but the, the common thread is that the Lord's Supper is very important. Um, they're going to focus um, a lot on baptism. Uh, baptism extreme is extremely important in the Church of Christ. They take more of a uh, a Catholic view on baptism, where baptism is the point. Your immersion in water is the point where you are added to the church. Uh, it is the point where you are forgiven of your sins. It is the point where you become a Christian. It is the point where your salvation is assured. It is the point that grace is received. Salvation and grace and all of the gifts that uh, that come by being in Christ, all of those occur at the point of immersion in water, at the point of baptism. Um, most churches of Christ would uh, adhere to that or some form close to it, uh, at the very least saying that baptism is extremely important. Um, so that that's one of the uh, the, the things about uh, the Church of Christ that is is extremely important. One of their core doctrines, uh, uh, going along with that, baptism is only reserved for um, people who can profess that Jesus is the Messiah and He came to die for our sins. And so, infant baptism is definitely out in the Church of Christ. Not going to see that there. Uh, most churches of Christ would be, um, as far as uh, theologies, um, would not be Calvinistic in any way, shape, or form. Probably deny all five points of TULIP, uh, the, all five Calvinist points. Um, they, uh, but they're not strictly Arminian either. Um, they, they would deny a couple of points of Arminianism as well. And so they're this, um, they're unique. They just are unique. Um, so that's, that, that's another, but you know, different churches of Christ will have different thoughts on that. Um, some of the uh, um, other things of the Church of Christ, uh, a Church of Christ will probably 
they're, they're probably not going to be, <clears throat> when it comes to eschatology, they're not going to be dispensational premillennialists, uh, which is what the majority of uh, evangelical churches are today, That, uh, um, in, at least in the United States. Um, I can't say the majority, uh, quite a few, especially uh, um, when it comes to um, dispensational premillennialism, that, that is a predominant thought uh, in many, uh, probably because uh, it's just so popular in the United States with the Left Behind series and, and all these books by popular uh, theologians. Maybe some would be historical premillennialist. Um, most would probably be post-millennial or amillennial, and you got a couple of preterists in there as well. Um, when people find out that the guy sitting next to them is a preterist, they would probably do whatever they could to get that guy kicked out of the church, though. So they're frowned upon by the mainstream uh, Church of Christ. Those, uh, if you're if you're not familiar with those eschatological terms, I think I have a series of videos on those eschatological terms. Let me see what else is there about the Church of Christ that you might not know. Um, it is shrinking. It is. Uh, one of the denominations that are oh there's there's the, the other thing I'll, I'll I'll bring that up so they are shrinking they're one of the denominations that is is hemorrhaging left and right um, and uh, that's there are several reasons for that I'm not going to go into that in this video but um, they are shrinking another thing about the Church of Christ is that they will say that they are not a denomination. At least some branches of the Church of Christ will say that they are not a denomination. Uh, other branches will say that they are a denomination. They'll admit that. Um, I say that they're a denomination. But uh, they, they, the, the more conservative branches will say we're not a denomination. We are the one true church. Christ is not divided. Uh, if you're a denomination, you are divided away from Christ and so you're not the true church. So in order to say that we're not uh, divided away from Christ, we're not going Christ. We're not going to call ourselves a denomination. So um, I think I, th I think I've covered the the main points of uh, of what distinguishes a Church of Christ from from other churches. Um, yeah, there are many in the Church of Christ. I would say the vast majority in the Church of Christ <clears throat> are not charismatic, meaning that they um, do believe that the Holy Spirit is is definitely um, part of the triune God. Uh, they are in, in the Trinity, uh, but they do not believe that the Holy Spirit is imparting uh, miraculous gifts on um, the church today. Um, many people in the Church of Christ would adhere to that belief. But there are people in the Church of Christ in, in some branches that are scattered uh, in there that uh, do believe that miracles still happen today, that have uh, what will say that they speak in tongues and uh, they just are quiet and they don't uh, say anything because they know that so many people in the Church of Christ don't believe that, that they'll be ostracized. So, But there are several people that I know personally in the, in the Church of Christ that do believe that miracles still happen today and uh, um, do believe that uh, um, tongues still happen today and uh, have actually spoken in tongues themselves. So uh, let me see. I think that's about it. What at the point of this video was, I was going to tell you what the first kink was in me uh, um, believing everything in the Church of Christ was correct. It's this. So I used to live in Belton, Texas, and I would work in Austin, Texas, about an hour drive. And so on my way back and forth to Austin in my little 1995 red Toyota Tercel, um, I would put in a CD and I would listen to the Bible on CD. And uh, there's something about the Bible on CD that you just can't get away from. And that's you can't, the thing is, you can't see where you highlighted in your Bible. And so as you're listening 
to the Bible, you know, I'd read the Bible several times, but as, as I'm reading the Bible for myself, I can see that little highlighted text, my little proof text in there. As I'm getting closer to it, I'm kind of ignoring what I'm reading so that I can get to that proof text. That's the one that's really important. I would read that proof text and go, yeah, everything that I believe is true because I just read this proof text. It's not like that when you listen to the Bible. And so I was listening to the Bible back and forth uh, between Austin and Belton for, for months, and and uh, and I'm hearing like I'm hearing Ephesians being read from the first verse all the way to the end of the book, and Ephesians five comes up, and 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 I'm like, oh, okay, this is good, and then I then I hear the verse about singing, making melody in your heart, and. And it's like, wait a second. That that has nothing to do with what I thought it had to do with. Paul is not telling a church, hey, let me tell you how you're supposed to praise God. That is not what Paul is doing in that verse at all. At all. In context, it has nothing to do with how a church is supposed to praise God. It's not even about how anyone is supposed to praise God. It's totally ripped out of context. And then uh, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians comes up, and I'm listening to that, and the verse about singing in Colossians, just, that's not what Paul was talking about. And so just those two alone just made me question if those are out of context. What else is out of context? And so I just started listening with a new ear as I'm, and and I would um, make sure that I would hear an entire uh, uh, book of the Bible being, being read in, in, in one, in one sitting, in one car ride so that I could hear it in context and my world was rocked. And that was the first kink in my armor uh, that had me uh, so sheltered in the Church of Christ. And, uh, you know, it, it took a little while after that, but um, yeah, it's been about 13 years, I guess, maybe, maybe a little bit longer since I've decided, you know, I'm not going to identify myself as I'm a member of the Church of Christ. Oh, that's another thing. They don't call themselves Church of Christers. They call themselves, I'm a member of the church or a member of the Church of Christ. So anyway, just wanted to share with you um, what the first thing was that uh, started dissolving the mortar of my church house. And uh, eventually those walls came crumbling down. Hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for listening. If you wouldn't mind, subscribe to the channel, uh, That's Jesus Channel. Like this video, uh, comment on it, share it with your friends, and um, just so appreciative you've taken time to listen to me. Have a great day and be blessed.